Hi, and welcome to an introduction to Venn diagrams. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about Venn diagrams for systems with three sets within them. We're going to be talking about the vocabulary and geography, specifically the type of operations you might do on groups, and then what regions in our picture represent those subgroups. So here we have our basic setup of a three-set Venn diagram. Um, the different pieces are here. We have this square. That represents our universe. That's everything that we're going to be talking about is going to be inside this square. And then we've got our three circles. This is A, B, and C. Um, this is going to work in any type of scenario. If, for instance, A is a proper subset of B, everything that's in A is in B, well, I'll have items possibly in here, possibly in here, but I won't have any items out here. Um, if A is a proper subset of B and C combined, well, then I'll have stuff possibly in all three of these, but I won't have anything out here. If A is distinct, then I won't have anything in these three areas, but I'd have all of A's items out here. And if A was null, well, there'd be nothing inside this entire circle. So it deals with those um, strange scenarios or those different scenarios, even if it looks like maybe there should be something in these areas, you can leave them blank. All right, so first let's start with defining some sets uh, so that we can use them to talk about the different operations. So we're going to begin with these definitions. I'm using set builder notation here. So our universe is all items x such that x is an element of the natural numbers, our counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and x is less than 16. a is going to be the numbers that are in my universe that are odd. So 1, 3, 5, 7. Um, b is going to be all our numbers in our universe that are less than 6. And C is going to be all our items between 3 and 10. Now take a note here, I'm using strictly less than here in all of these. So, for instance, 6 is not going to be a member of B. So let's go ahead and put those in those groups. So let's start with 5. 5 is going to be in all three groups. 5 is odd, it's less than 6, it's between 3 and 10. Our next group is going to be 1 and 3. These are the items that are in A, so they're odd numbers, but they're also in B, they're less than 6, so 1 and 3. 7 and 9, also odd, and in between 3 and 10, but they're not less than 6, so they're going in this group here that are sh that's shared by A and C, but not B. 4 goes over here, 4 is less than 6, it's between 3 and 10, but it's not odd. So it's in B and C, but it's not in A, which is why we didn't put it here in the center. These are my other odd numbers that weren't part of B or C. These are unique to A. 2 is in B. It's not an odd number. It's less than 6, but it's not between 3 and 10. So this is unique to B. These two numbers are unique to C. And then these three numbers didn't fit any of my groups, A, B, or C. So they're still in the universe. They're still numbers that are part of my original definition, but they don't belong to A, B, or C. Typically, we put them up here in the upper right-hand corner. There's not really any reason why you couldn't put them down here, or over here, in any of this empty space that's not in the circles. This is just kind of stereotypically where we put them. Now, you could have a situation where someone throws something odd at you, like, where would 31 grow? Well, 31 is going to go outside our universe. It's not less than 16, so it's going to be out here. Typically, this isn't something that you know you discuss, but it's where it's going if it comes up. All right, so now we have our same setup, and we want to know, we're asked, well, what is set A? Well, set A is going to be all the numbers that are inside this circle, regardless of the subgroups. Everything in here is in A. So these seven numbers, eight numbers actually. Now here's our first operation. This is our intersection, this upside down U shape. Intersection means things that belong to both A and B. If you think about a street intersection, we're talking about the concrete that's both on First Street and Avenue A, for instance. So we wanna know 
here are our items that are in A, those rotating numbers there. And here are my items that are in B. And I want to know which ones are shared by A and B. And that's going to be these three numbers here, 1, 3, and 5. And they're in this football-shaped area here that's shared by A and B. Now, I have no mention of C, so I don't care whether it's in C or not. I just care that it's in both A and B. Now, here we're getting a little more complicated. We're doing the intersection of A, B, and C. So A, intersection B, intersection C. These are the items that are shared by all three. Here I care whether it's in C. And the only spot that we have is this kind of shield-shaped area here in the dead center. It's in A, it's in B, and it's in C. All right, now in this operation, we actually have a parenthesis. Just like in order of operations, parentheses take priority over everything else. So I want to know A intersection B, so the stuff that's in A and B, but not in C. This apostrophe is our negation. It means not C. Let's go ahead and start there with not C. That's going to be, so these are the items that are in C, but we want not C. So that's the ones that didn't rotate, these ones that I've highlighted in pink now. This is our not C. Now we want to know A intersection B. So that's these three numbers. I want the numbers that just rotated but are also in pink. So really, just one and three. So these are in A and B, A here and B here, but they're not in C, so I'm eliminating this shield area here. If I wanted A, intersection B, union C, complement. So I'm asking what items are in A, but not in B or C. So let's start with, these are the items that are in B and C together. This is B union C. This symbol, this right side up U, is our union. I like to think of it as a marriage. What belongs to B is now belongs to the bigger group. What belongs to C, what they shared, it all becomes part of one group. So this is my B union C here. These numbers, those are my A. So I want the numbers that just rotated but aren't part of B union C. So I'm going to eliminate these, and that's going to leave me with just these three numbers. These are the items that are unique to A.